desde dónde venimos, dónde estamos y a dónde vamos. ¿no? Eh, esta mañana tenemos el placer de, eh, de recibir, de, bueno, de recibir, no, pero de eh, escuchar a la doctora Bahía Dato Abdul Hamid, eh, que nos va a presentar eh, eh, una conferencia, que nos va a dar una conferencia sobre eh, los estudios de género en Malasia. Eh, eh, la doctora eh, eh, Bahía Dato eh, Abdul Hamid, la voy a presentar brevemente porque veo que no son los mismos estudiantes, entonces para, sí, sí unos, pero otros que no, entonces brevemente decir que eh, es profesora adjunta y subdirectora del Centro de Liderazgo de la Mujer Tun Fatima Hashim de la Universidad de Kebang Sahan de Malasia, donde se dedica a la planeación, organización, investigación, práctica y difusión de conocimientos sobre el liderazgo. Todos los programas y actividades del centro están enfocados en estas alianzas inteligentes con la comunidad, la sociedad civil, así como los sectores públicos y privados. Fue directora por dos periodos consecutivos del Centro de Investigación sobre Género de la Facultad de Ciencias Sociales de la misma universidad, el cual fue reestructurada y actualizada y ahora recibe el nombre de Tun Fatima Ashin. Fue vicepresidenta de la SAMA, siglas en inglés de Asoci Asociación del Sudeste Asiático para los Estudios de Género, con sede en Malasia, por dos periodos y de la cual es miembro activo. Tiene eh, muchas publicaciones, eh, entre estas eh, destaca un libro, eh, English Grammar for Malaysians, eh, también se interesó por eh, los estudios, eh, eh, el estudio de los estereotipos de género y el sexismo eh, lingüístico en eh, los libros de texto de la escuela primaria en Qatar. Eh, tiene varios capítulos de libros, eh, todos enfocados en lenguaje y también género, ¿no? Eh, ¿Qué puedo añadir? Puedo añadir que eh, eh, la doctora Vaya me eh, dejó y va a estar eh, en el PIEM toda una documentación eh, sobre eh, el Centro de Liderazgo. Entonces, eh, les invito, eh, invito a todos los estudiantes interesados en, eh, no sé, hacer una estancia en Malasia si se puede, en documentarse, eh, ver qué es lo que propone el Centro de Liderazgo y eh, pues esto está a su disposición, hay varios eh, así en, allá en el PIEM. Eh, bueno, pues vaya, eh, te dejo la palabra y ya. Yeah. <ríe> Gracias por estar con nosotros. Thank you, Karin. Um, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, I must thank PM um, and also um, CES um, for actually um, providing this avenue for me uh, to be here um, with distinguished guests as well from France and definitely the hosts, Mexicans, um, uh, who are yeah, very much um, uh, respected in the area of uh, gender and women's studies. <clears throat> Let me um, discuss what I will present today. <clears throat> and um, my presentation outline um, will be a brief introduction to Malaysia. I think we've talked about um, Malaysia so much, I would like to actually um, have you look at how the geographical uh, aspect of Malaysia, the demographic of Malaysia as well has an impact on what we are doing in gender studies and women's studies and also with women equality and equity. Um, later, I will also discuss about women in development to gender and development, talking about policies, institutional and legal frameworks. 
I think this is very important because this is um, the uh, institutional and the governmental aspect um, of which uh, we must thank yeah, um, for Malaysia why we have um, equity policies as well as policies in, um, for women's development and progress. Not just that, also how it is that um, we have had women's studies and gender studies being part and parcel of the education system. I will have a little bit of introduction um, to the aspect of what the focus is of my um, uh, lecture today uh, about women and gender studies, um, gender research programs in Malaysia and uh, uh, institutions of higher education in Malaysia. I will discuss three yeah, uh, different um, projects or programs and then I will go on to discuss also within that the objectives, the structure, um, and talk about uh, University Kebangsaan's Gender Studies program, and then later on talk about the research endeavors, what the challenges are, and then moving forward to the Tun Fatima Hashim Leadership Center, and what it means for future directions for not just this um, uh, center, but also for the uh, government of Malaysia. I don't know whether uh, many of you know where Malaysia is, um, but um, if you can see this very colourful yeah, map, we are um, in Southeast Asia. Um, we are two different areas. You will find um, we are bordering uh, Thailand and northern one-third of the island of Borneo. So we are East Malaysia, which is at Borneo, and Peninsular Malaysia, which is bordering yeah, Thailand and then Singapore and Indonesia. Now, if you look at where we are, we are in the crossroads of very, very uh, fast developing countries. Our neighbor, Singapore, which is down south, is a very progressive, um, very robust economy. Indonesia is also progressing very fast in its economy. And uh, um, then to the north, yeah, you will see okay, um, where um, we are, where you will find um, China, and then later you will be able to see Korea and so forth. This has lots of um, implications to Malaysia as far as its economic development. And um, the progression of women is also very important uh, for us. Uh, when we think about um, Malaysia and its economic policy. We are a very young country, just 56 years old. We just recently um, celebrated our birthday, 31st of August. Um, there are 13 states um, and, and three federal territories and um, peninsula Malaysia itself has 11 states and two federal territories. The East Malaysia has two states, Sabah and Sarawak, and one federal territory that's Labuan. Sarawak is the biggest state in Malaysia and the most vastly yeah, or, you know, uh, um, populated um, in the sense that you will have interior uh, and the rural states as well. Faces of Malaysia, you can think of Malaysians even um, very closely resembling uh, Mexicans because um, where we are geographically yeah, um, and uh, historically. Okay, um, population structure by gender, um, if you look at this, this is 2000 and 2005, but let me look, give you a, a, um, some idea about uh, how we are in uh, two. 2012, uh, in the mid yeah, population, we have 15 to 64 years uh, of age, males, um, and females also in that, sorry, in that category, um, in which we are about yeah, equal in the sense as far as population uh, is concerned. Uh, when you look at the 15 to 64 years old, um, these are, you know, um, also the age where they are um, schooling and working age. Let me uh, now go on to discussing of the 
development yeah, of women and particularly when we talk about this, we talk about gender equality development in Malaysia. Um, in 2001, yeah, um, the federal constitution was um, looked back um, and now we have changed um, the terms yeah, of reference before was if you can look at the excerpt yeah, um, where there shall be no discriminations against citizens on the ground of religion, race, descent, place of birth and ge or gender. Yeah, now it has been changed to and gender. Let me uh, bring you to uh, give you some idea yeah, about the um, gender equality development in Malaysia. In 1972, um, you know, uh, since the government is very, very interested in education and education becomes part and parcel of the development, this is only then that we have women teachers receiving the same pay as males. Uh, how is this um, uh, possible? Because in 1963, we have set up, yeah, um, NCWO or the National Council's Council for Women organization. It is the main yeah, consulta uh, consultative and advocacy uh, NGO and it advocates changes yeah, in policies, legislations, programs and services. And one of the earliest success to this is the, uh, to the advancement of women is equal pay for work for equal value. Uh, and also pens pensionable status for women and uh, also separate income tax assessment for women. So NCWO has been a very, very important yeah, um, consultative and adv uh, advocacy NGO for us in Malaysia where it fights for the equality of women. Now, um, we also in 1985 formulated the National Policy on Women, um, which is a guide for participation in the development process. And then, um, if you can see, yeah, in 1991, 1995, we have the six Malaysian plan. And all these Malaysian plans of five years, yeah, will have to include, yeah, the progress of women in there to show that uh, there is, yeah, um, progress of women in all parts of society. In 1995, um, with the agreement of the Beijing Conference um, and CEDAW, this is the start of um, the mainstreaming yeah, um, for gender equality. Uh, and in many um, um, government yeah, um, offices and government institutions, um, gender mainstreaming is being set up for this. And then you will see um, the seven Malaysian plan that takes into consideration a lot of different planning yeah, uh, and also the national vision policy which is Malaysia becoming um, uh, um, a uh, uh, developed country by 2020. Um, now in 2001 we also after having the Department of Women Affairs under the Prime Minister's Department, we now have a legitimate ministry, Ministry of Women's, uh, uh, develop, uh, Women, Family and Development. In 1996, we have domestic, the, the domestic Violence Act, and I think Christina may be um, interested in this because of um, her interest in uh, violence against women. Um, we also adopted the Women's and Girls Protection Act in 1973 and then amendments for the prevention and handling of sexual harassment in the workplace. 1998, the government uh, reviewed and extended maternity leave in the public sector from 42 days to 60 days, but paternity leave still three, three days. I think um, now we've uh, moved that to seven days. Now, in 2001, uh, like I've said, there is this establishment of the Ministry of Women, Family and Development to address women. And then um, in 2004, NCWO and with all other NGOs also, uh, okay, thank you. And in um, 2004, um, we managed yeah, um, to uh, have a policy 
which is an affirmative action policy where women will make at least yeah, 30 percent decision making positions in the public sector by 2015. Is that okay? Okay. Um, in 2005, we see the budget for the Ministry of Women, Family and Community Development increase from 1.8 million in 2001 to 30.5 million. Um, so this shows a yeah, um, very active uh, part of the government um, to actually uh, empower women. Uh, 2007, the Anti-Trafficking in Persons Act 2007 implemented since March 2008. Um, and if you think about the geography of Malaysia, you will find out that Malaysia is also yeah, um, uh, in the crossroads for human you know, trafficking and also for the sex trade. So this has become a very partic a, uh, particular issue in Malaysia and um, the amendments have been made uh, for legal uh, protection of women and the Anti-Trafficking uh, Persons Act. There are also other women and legislation which you can read. Um, I will not go into this, but I think um, you can find that progressively we are yeah, um, uh, having a lot of amendments made, um, new policies coming up. In 2011, um, we followed the policy of 30% um, women in decision making in the public sector. Now, 30% is um, to some of us who know. Um, not uh, particularly, you know, uh, uh, a high rate. Um, however, if you consider Norway and Iceland with 40% and very harsh yeah, um, legislations uh, towards this, I think uh, we are on the way yeah, um, to having this uh, at least 30% policy for women. Um, as we see just now, um, a lot of uh, the policies uh, that we have in Malaysia are also part of the development agenda. Uh, there are three yeah, um, development agenda, the new economic policy, the national development policy, and the national vision policy that takes into consideration women in this. Within the three policy frameworks, um, this would guide Malaysia into attaining a developed status by 2020. And um, when we look at the Malaysian plan, which is a five-year period, um, now we are in the 10th Malaysian plan, uh, which is uh, 2010 to 2015. Um, there are things that can be said about um, how women yeah, are, are being empowered here. Now, in the 10th Malaysian plan, categorically, um, it states that empowering women will be the key agenda of the plan, where the government will increase its efforts towards addressing issues confronting women to enable them to uh, realize their full potential and participate more effectively in the, co in, in the economy and social development of the country. So um, as we go along and we are in this um, period, uh, there are many um, uh, uh, programs that have been um, uh, uh, established by the government. Um, the national vision is also um, being strengthened um, and uh, here with the five key trusts to enable the national goals and objectives. I think um, all these are important for women. Um, the very important part would be, F, uh, would be this where we could improve human capital development encompassing not only knowledge and skills, but also ethical values, progressive mindset, and cultural awareness. Now, uh, this is for the one of the five uh, key trusts that is important. Uh, however, it's not just that, but um, because of the economy, we want to improve Malaysia with the help, um, with the support of women as well, playing 50-50, yeah, uh, equal partnership um, in this endeavor. Uh, I want to show you a little bit about the policy implementation and the recommendation from CEDAW and NGOs. Uh, this has been uh, part and parcel about how we are looking into um, 
uh, plans yeah, and also actions that are being taken by NGOs and also the government sector. But I won't go into this. Um, there is, if you would like to, uh, to look at this uh, more, um, the uh, uh, PowerPoints are here for you. Um, in the decision-making um, level, there are paradoxes, um, and I think uh, we will discuss paradoxes again and again um, here. Uh, Malaysia is uh, also sh um, showing yeah, with the trends um, that with statistics and so forth that um, there still remain a paradox even though there have been all these uh, action plans taken by the government. Um, the cabinet positions in 2010 uh, is 4% women yeah, in the ministerial uh, state and deputy uh, ministers 12.1%. That's very, very low. I don't want to tell you about what happened after um, 20, uh, 2010. Just recently we have had an um, in election and still women are very, very uh, low being represented in decision making at the public sector. Um, in the decision making uh, uh, in the academia, um, the current status of um, higher education, in the 20 Malaysian public uh, universities, there are only three female vice chancellors, and that makes it 15%. Uh, 11 over 40 female deputy vice chancellors are yeah, in the 20 um, uh, public universities. So it's very, still very low. However, we see a global trend in this with 23% in the US college and university yeah, presidents, 20% women. Uh, and in Australia, as of 2002, 21% yeah, are women as presidents. So worldwide, yeah, um, we compare to this, still there is a lack of women. And so there goes the paradox. Um, Generally, um, we talk about the gender gap in 2007, Malaysia still ranked 92, uh, and very low yeah, when we talk about women in a ministerial position. Um, I don't want to talk much about this because uh, you can uh, have a look at this um, uh, later, but policy implementations for decision making have um, also been uh, recommended by the CEDAW and NCWO, and they have been and what has happened now is the affirmative action policies to ensure that women's participation in decision-making levels, uh, not only politics, but also in the public sector, at least 30%. Um, there are also um, major yeah, discussions about committees that are concerned uh, about the level of representation of women at the decision-making level at the private sector and organizations. And now we are looking into uh, the 30% yeah, affirmative action, whether this is not just the public uh, sector, but also the pri private and the corporate sector. Let me um, uh, talk about the uh, state of the gender studies in public institutions of higher learning in Malaysia. Like I've also mentioned yesterday there are and today, there are 20 public um, uh, universities in Malaysia. Uh, and out of that, there are four yeah, universities that take very uh, much interest in women's studies and gender studies. Uh, I will focus uh, this rep uh, presentation now on the gender studies in three public institutions of higher learning in Malaysia. Uh, this spans from 1995 to 2011. Uh, namely, um, the Women's Development Research Center, or I will call Kanita, in uh, University of Science Malaysia. This is in Penang, which is the northern uh, part of Peninsula Malaysia. Uh, University of Bangsa and Malaysia, um, the Center for Gender Research, of which I was um, the director. Um, University of Bangsa and Malaysia is right um, near Kuala Lumpur, which is the capital. It's 30 kilometers away. University Malaysia, or University Malaya, with its Gender Studies Program, the GSP program, 
um, is also in Kuala Lumpur. So I will discuss this um, and I will talk about the history, the background, the objectives, structure and challenges of the gender studies program uh, and as well as gender research yeah, um, centers of, of the above mentioned public institutions of higher learning. Now this may matter um, much because um, here with PM uh, there can be um, something that we can both look into or all of us can look into to see how much um, similarities or differences there are. Later on, I will talk about um, the introduction of the Tun Fatima Hashim Women's Leadership Centre at University of Bangsa and Malaysia. Let's talk about the background in history. Kanita and CGR were established from a research cluster. I've mentioned this yesterday. Um, we start out with research before we start to have institutionalization of the centers. So Kanita um, in the 1970s was studying the socio-economic and political contributions of women in the wake of the country's drive towards modernization. Kanita achieves its status as an autonomous research center within University Science Malaysia on 17th of April 2001. Now this is followed by CGR, Center for Gender Research, that um, was established in 2003. However, work and clusters yeah, about uh, research on women's, women's conditions and so forth um, was undertook uh, by um, early 1980s uh, by a cluster of women. Yeah? Um, so they undertook multidisciplinary investigations in the reconstruction of womanhood in Malay culture and society in the face of modernization and the challenges of globalization. Um, and while we have these two, which are um, research centers, we also have the gender yeah, a program uh, of University of Malaysia, uh, University of Malaya, and this started uh, since the 1994-95 academic session. Um, and this is an undergraduate yeah, gender studies program. This is the first in the country under the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. And it aims to meet you know, the um, contemporary needs in a rapidly in the, in industrialization, yeah, industrializing nation. Um, it trains students to be sensitive to gender issues and to apply their training to the job market. Um, since the 1994-95 um, session, um, the GSP is also trying to get um, the master's program. However, uh, until now, 2011, um, it has not um, been achieved. Uh, this is one uh, aspect of challenge that we need to discuss later. Uh, and why is this so? I will bring out uh, this aspect. Uh, the objective of Kanita, um, also the objective of CGR and the uh, objective of uh, CGS may not be, yeah, there are similarities in it, but because the institutions are very different from one another, there may be you know, um, differences as well. Now, with Kanita's um, uh, with, with the establishment of Kanita yeah, um, in, um, uh, in the north, um, one of the objective is yeah, to in, in, uh, intensify yeah, uh, the significance and impact on policy and program development concerning women and gender issues. Like I've mentioned yesterday, a lot of our public um, um, universities are called in uh, by uh, the government yeah, um, to be part and parcel of a consultation as well as doing research. And we um, then uh, look into the urgencies of what is happening um, at that point in time uh, and also think about the future. And um, the impact of policy in any research that we do is very called for and in fact demanded yeah? um, because many times when there is um, funding that comes into it, we will have to show the impact factor for policy as well. Um, 
Also, Kanita conducts gender frame research with the goal of producing socially transformative measures that can benefit target groups. Now, um, uh, many of us um, look at target groups um, within you know, um, different sectors. Um, so with Kanita, um, a lot of this were to do with uh, the rural yeah, sectors um, and women and family. Um, the part and parcel of the work yeah, is to not just do research, but even to um, publish works and contribute to inter intellectual discourse. All these things are also the same yeah, um, with um, uh, uh, PM here. Um, for CGR, this has been um, a research center um, that uh, was like um, Kanita, uh, very multidisciplinary yeah, um, research um, center uh, that brings about uh, scholars from a variety of disciplines. And um, it as well as uh, Kanita serves as a national regional research and resource for gender studies. For GSP, um, because it is not a research center per se, it is actually um, a, a teaching center and therefore a lot yeah, hinges on to, to um, uh, educate yeah, um, students about gender perspectives and feminist standpoint through various subjects and courses. Uh, this is um, uh, a multidisciplinary yeah, um, uh, uh, center as well that takes in um, uh, core yeah, people from outside of the university as well as inside of the university. So um, University of Malaya have uh, developed this um, program uh, where there is also community development to create to the creation of gender awareness at all levels of society. Later on, I will show you the program and, and see because uh, many of the work that the students do uh, also has yeah, links to um, different levels, yeah, and mainly the grassroots levels. Yeah? Now, who are the... Um, the clients yeah, of uh, the GSP. Um, many uh, uh, groups that have come and go um, in GSP have actually been um, students who uh, are very interested in gender equality and social justice. Many of them go out to be acti activists and social um, uh, workers. Uh, but also there are academics who want to um, get uh, themselves, uh, uh, there are also some students who want to get themselves into academia and do research. So this uh, was um, one of the objectives set out by GSP. And um, so far, uh, they have been um, quite successful yeah, in bringing out um, uh, many of our newer uh, um, a social activists and um, many of the students are now also working in and uh, part and parcel of the university system in Malaysia. Um, the structure of Kanita, um, I think um, as it is, there are active board comprising of dedicated scholars um, by the vice chancellor. So in Kanita, it was directly under the chancellery. Um, and so that has got a lot to do with how resources yeah, are, are being uh, used. Um, not just uh, that, Kanita has now uh, offered postgraduate programs for those pursuing women and gender studies by research. And upon completion, they are awarded the Master of Social Science in Gender Studies or PhD. Now, um, when I interviewed yeah, um, people in Kanita, they are now saying that a lot of their students in the postgraduate programs were dealing with health issues. Yeah, uh, and many of them were also um, looking into poverty and um, strengthening or, you know, um, uh, strengthening women. Uh, uh, in sustainable uh, uh, life uh, so that there will be, you know, uh, no disparity uh, um, 
as far as poverty is concerned. Uh, the structure of CGR, um, they, there were five members um, yeah, uh, uh, working in a management committee. Um, this was under the purview of the social sciences uh, and humanities faculties, so it actually did not have a lot of autonomy. It was under a faculty. Um, there have been um, 75 yeah, members which are not permanent but are research affiliates in the centre and they are academicians from UKM and other universities as well. Now, um, later on CGR um, worked, yeah, the affiliates worked to create a gender studies programme for postgraduates under the Masters of Social Science programme. And so I will um, discuss yeah, uh, with you the UKM Gender Studies Program. This is a half, um, one and a half year program with 36 units offered by the School of Social Development and Environmental Studies under the Faculty of Social Sciences and Humanities. And um, this actually um, looks and puts in yeah, uh, gender within um, the uh, development uh, aspect um, and um, looking at gender uh, from many perspectives yeah. Also, research methodology in social sciences and feminist theories um, were very important, uh, but also because many of the students uh, wanted to, um, or go out to become social workers, the family, gender and development uh, aspects were also very important and became core subjects. Uh, other than that, um, there were uh, other yeah, um, uh, elective courses that we thought at that point in time would be a, necess a necessity um, for um, students um, to get into, especially um, the aspect of women and political activism in Muslim societies. Under the gender uh, UM, yeah, uh, University of Malaya Gender Studies Program, um, it offers a minor in gender studies um, and is working to create a, a major. However, um, it's still yeah, um, uh, hoping to get a major soon, but I am really, we, we really don't know. Yeah? Uh, however, the gender studies minor requires students to take tread, uh, 30 credit hours and a, a minimum of 10 courses. And students from the Faculty of Arts and uh, Social Sciences as well as other faculties are welcome to take gender studies courses as electives. Um, there, there are some of these courses here um, that um, you can see. Uh, perhaps they are similar yeah, to the one you have here in Mexico. Um, I don't know about um, Paris 8, um, maybe very diff different from us, yeah, uh, but still the gender and development aspect um, uh, and the feminist theories and so forth are part and parcel of this program. Um, also, um, in the third year um, and so forth, students start to become, yeah, um, uh, uh, have a choice yeah, in looking at what actually they are interested in when they go out. So there are things like gender and law, gender and work, gender relation, um, adat and social change. Adat is uh, Malay yeah, for the cultural practices uh, and um, what social change there are. So these are some of the um, uh, uh, topics um, and courses that were um, involved in this gender studies program. Uh, the research endeavours also took up yeah, um, trust in different areas and if you can see um, things like sustainable development, policies and law, health, family and media, uh, Kanita has been very, very strong in the health and family aspect, yeah? um, but, but with health and family aspects, um, things such as policies and uh, laws also become very important. Uh, research endeavours for CGR, there's um, particularly uh, many different areas um, and uh, we started out with the cultural context of the body. Um, that was the all we were talking about this yesterday uh, and then, you know, we still yeah, um, revisited 
uh, from time to time. Uh, uh, democracy, uh, politics and law that has to take um, um, involved with the NGOs or the, nation, uh, or the women's movement. Um, uh, also, yeah, very important uh, areas uh, that we look into. Just as important as e economy, labor and work. Uh, family and well-being. Malaysia is very, very uh, filial uh, in this sense and we were talking um, with Eric yes, uh, today. Um, and um, I think it's also the same yeah, with uh, Mexico, um, where we are also looking yeah, um, into how the intergenerational and intergender and intragender dynamics yeah, um, of the young. And I was talking about the youth yesterday, which has become a very important core group yeah, um, to, to uh, research. Of course, development education and human de development, um, science and technology, language, media and communication has also become um, one very important uh, area in which gender yeah, could be looked into. Uh, and I've been very interested in gender and language, gender and media, gender and communication. Uh, for GSP, like we talked yesterday, um, Christina also um, talked about how it is um, that students per yeah, um, different research endeavors. Uh, and um, here it is that um, we, uh, because of the trends that is happening and the niche areas that uh, are very important yeah, uh, to us as a society, um, gender violence has become uh, one of the topic or areas of um, research um, that's very much looked into. Other than this, um, there, because um, uh, people yeah, um, in uh, the University of Malaya were very strong yeah, in poverty studies and um, women at work and so forth. Uh, these have also become part and parcel yeah, of the research endeavors. So you'll find um, things like uh, um, uh, women's legal rights in yeah, um, the workplace and so forth, uh, gender and social policies as very important yeah, um, research endeavors. Um, the institution, if you can see, yeah, as it goes across the institution of the family, gender roles and transformation has also part and parcel of the research endeavor of these three um, uh, centers. What are the challenges? Um, Kanita, as well as um, USM, um, the uh, gender program there and uh, UM. We have had a round table discussion um, in 2007 and these are some of the things that have been uh, collected yeah, through the round table with um, uh, um, people within the centers telling us what seemed to be the problem yeah, for this. Uh, the challenges um, are in fact uh, interlinked with resources. And many times um, we find that uh, working with limited resources, not just um, financially, but also uh, human capital. Yeah, um, uh, we find uh, there are some times um, very important aspect because many of us working there have not been formally trained in gender. Yeah, um, or gender studies and so forth. Uh, many have taken the initiative on their own to do this. Yeah, um, and only later on that we have people uh, trained within these institutions to come back and help with the teaching. So, so part of this uh, have been the human capital development uh, problem. Um, also, um, Kanita and uh, many of uh, the uh, other two yeah, um, uh, centers also find yeah, um, problems in finding the momentum yeah, to go on to sustain programs. Yeah? Um, and so this is something um, that we still keep on yeah, uh, discussing. I think one of the important issues here would be the um, uh, problem of funds yeah, uh, and sustainability of the programs. Um, also, challenges 
are towards the aspect of norms, culture, traditions, and so forth. So, um, to be able to maintain the momentum yeah, of gender studies um, and programs uh, about gender, um, we have uh, actually encountered a lot um, with gender stereotypes and sexism, uh, and therefore we all the time need it, yeah, um, to actually fight um, and not be submerged yeah, um, into this. So um, the three centers actually did uh, discuss um, the aspect of challenges of the environment around, yeah, um, uh, not just um, nationally, but also locally around uh, their centers. Okay, I won't go on to um, the challenge of CGR and GSP because I've already discussed this um, and given you a summary. What I would like to do now is to move forward and um, to let you know that um, CGR, or Center for Gender Studies in UKM, in University of Kebangsaan, where I have come from, is now no more. From 2003 to 2010, it ceased. Yeah, um, um, it, it was there, but from 2010, it ceased um, to become an entity. Now it has changed yeah, its facade, yeah, but not necessarily the heart, but maybe face yeah, change. Uh, um, and uh, we move forward towards this. Yeah? Um, so Tun Fatima Hashim Women's Leadership Center, University of Kebangsaan, has its legacy from Center for Gender Research. Yeah, and we move forward. Um, why? I talked to you about the paradox um, just now. Uh, and uh, when we look at women in development um, and gender in development, we find that um, when we talk about women, um, as we go yeah, um, forward, uh, many of us uh, women are educated, especially in Malaysia. However, as we get towards the top, yeah, you will find very, very few yeah, women. So um, these have been um, uh, called the glass searing, uh, the liberant. Now people talk about the glass cliff, yeah, uh, which all uh, seem to bear uh, forth that there is a paradox. Um, even though uh, women are being trained, there are policies, however, women don't go up to the top. Um, here, I would like to show you um, one of the um, important uh, aspects of why yeah, we have the Tun Fatima Hashim Women's Leadership Center. Um, is a, a very uh, important national trend that we find now, yeah, um, because as I said just now, despite the policies uh, that we have and despite 60% in UKM, women, yeah, um, being uh, educated, um, and you find very few women in the labor force. Now, the participation of women in the labor force today is 46% uh, in Malaysia, and is the lowest yeah, in the ASEAN region um, for nearly three decades. So I think um, if we think about Malaysia wanting to be um, you know, uh, develop in 2020, we certainly need women to be part and parcel of the development. However, we don't see this aspect. So this is why um, there is a kind of national panic yeah, um, uh, that needs to be now um, looked into. Uh, and uh, while you have women who are with higher education and they qualify yeah, um, to become whatever they want to be, only, you know, under half of them enter in the labor force. So the, gov the government yeah, now intends um, to raise um, the labor force participation of women to 55% by 2015. So like I mentioned yesterday, and I talked to Solidad about this, um, sometimes while we in the center feel that we want to do whatever we can, sometimes the agenda is already made for us. So having um, uh, been part and parcel of the government incentive, um, we now have to look in, into 
and do research into how we can yeah, start to help women. Um, first of all, how to retain women in the workforce is important, but how also to increase yeah, women in the workforce. So we've already had our work cut out for us for the next five years yeah, with this. Um, this is uh, something I wanted to show you, um, also related to the one just now, where if you think uh, women with higher education are qualified, um, they actually uh, you know, um, being part and parcel of half of the labor force. Also a very um, uh, issue uh, that is uh, panicking us is Malaysia you know, shows just one you know, single peak um, and we are the lowest nation, um, even Indonesia yeah, and other yeah, countries are already uh, sur uh, surpassing us in this. So um, with the transition of graduates, you'll find that women yeah, um, who graduate, uh, now the trend is by 24 years old to about 45 years old, they are lost somewhere. So um, where are they? This is something that um, we uh, want to look into. Um, and um, this is very important because this is how it is. Um, um, it, it has been shown yeah, through, um, well, people in economics know this, uh, and they do all these calculations, and it's been said that um, if women don't get into this yeah, um, uh, labor participation, then we lose a lot in economy. Uh, it seems ominous, seems, you know, um, uh, uh, very sad. However, it is a very uh, important thing to look into, especially for our centre. Um, women in senior management, just want to show you um, how we are as uh, related to other countries. Um, we're still uh, not very much ahead um, and there's still a lot yeah, of, for us to do. Women in decision making at the corporate sector, um, women are in the mid management. However, women don't go up much to up, you know, um, especially to become um, uh, women in the board of directors. So this has become part um, and parcel of um, a research as well for us. I am now uh, conducting a research um, with uh, under the aegis of the uh, ministry. Um, and I'm looking into 955 yeah, um, companies yeah, um, in Malaysia uh, to look into the aspect of diversity. Um, what happens if women get into the boards? Yeah, um, and then there will also be uh, policy changes that we hope um, to make after we have done the research. Okay, um, let me talk to you a little bit about Tun Fatima Mahashim's Women Leadership Center. Um, like I say, it's an upgrade. Um, and uh, since July 2013, we are now renamed Tun Fatima Mahashim Women's Leadership Center. This is in commemoration of our first women minister and a woman who was integral, yeah, um, working with um, the National Council of Women's Organization to get equal pay and so forth for women in Malaysia. So we uh, respect and commemorate her with her, the name, yeah, um, Tun Fatima Hashim. Well, what is our vision? Uh, we aim to empower and develop women as leaders at the individual, family, organization, and community, le uh, community levels. So um, we have another agency or an institution called the um, NAM Institute, yeah, um, uh, that looks into the higher echelon. Um, we are taking uh, 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 a look and doing research for women other than a higher echelon down to the grassroots levels. So like I said yesterday, we also look at um, com uh, community uh, leaders, yeah, um, who are now made up more men than women. Um, we want to see that change, um, how through training, um, through awareness and so forth, uh, and how they could uh, become leaders in their own community. Yeah, not just uh, looking at women in the board, but we are going down. Yeah. Um, 
Okay, our mission um, to develop knowledge and I think disseminate, um, do research and things like that. This is the same with any uh, um, uh, centre of this kind. Uh, but we now find that we need to actually uh, be um, doing yeah, uh, our work with the help of, uh, of stakeholders, uh, basically also NGOs. Okay, um, I think um, the objectives, um, again, I said, you know, disseminate knowledge, apply leadership knowledge, but I think one important factor here is to build a critical mass of women leaders. But however, just putting in the numbers is not enough. We need to actually think about transforming the kind of leadership and thinking about how women can be part and parcel yeah, of the leadership. Um, database of knowledge is something that we want to do as well, and perhaps this is what we can share yeah, um, with um, uh, um, Mexico as well. I think um, basically I don't need to go into this, um, but I would like to go into um, the kinds of research that we are doing. Uh, we partner with um, the government, uh, and if you look at uh, one of our important yeah, research area is to do with women in micro businesses. Um, this is how um, we help yeah, the government uh, in training uh, women. We had 30 women who were um, uh, very good, you know, had their skills in making um, uh, cooking uh, and so forth. And so we are trying, uh, we have helped them to start to have a sustainable life. Yeah? Um, and part and parcel of what the government wants now is to create job opportunities, but to create it through entrepreneurship. So Taman Satu Azam um, has been one of our um, uh, programs that we have had, um, and it has been very successful. Um, and the ministry has want us now to start again. If you want me to uh, discuss this, I will discuss this um, uh, later. Uh, publications, um, generally, yeah, uh, we're doing case studies on women leaders in Malaysia. We find that uh, there are still a lack of this. Um, and how uh, is it that we want to look into this is to get case studies, um, best practices and so forth. Um, from the women themselves, yeah? Advocacy and training, um, we've discussed um, some of this already. Uh, and I think um, this is something that uh, perhaps we can work with um, and learn yeah, um, from um, PM here. Okay, um, the database, what we are looking into, I think uh, because of the mainstreaming that we have had, um, uh, program, uh, we must um, thank yeah, the government of Malaysia for having sex this is segregated statistics. Before 1980s, it was very, very difficult to get sex desegregated statistics. Now it's, well, I can't say very easy, but still there is a commitment to have this. Uh, basically, what we had were uh, a lot of racial. Yeah, statistics because Malaysia is a very multiracial yeah, country. But now with the sex segregated statistics, it becomes very much easier um, to do studies and to look at comparative studies of other um, countries. Um, I don't want to talk about community development, but I would like to talk about the women's leadership chair. Uh, chair. Uh, in 2012, the government approved the setting up of a women's leadership chair in University of Bangsa and Malaysia. Just very recently, we hosted yeah, our inaugural chair. And um, what um, happens is um, with this leadership chair, we do um, uh, um, research also um, to do um, with uh, training and information. Yeah, um, gathering and so forth. So uh, the chair has um, a lot to do with um, uh, being uh, making yeah um, this centre uh, international in some sense. Yeah, the endowment chair is uh, for eight years, and we hope that one day 
um, Mexican um, specialists yeah, would be um, part and parcel of our chair as well. So I think that will be one that I'm looking forward um, to see for the next few years. Okay, um, as a shareholder, um, this person works with us to do research, publication, some supervision, um, have conferences and do networking. I've given um, uh, Kareen, you know, two publications that we have had um, for public lectures with our chair. And I think um, this is something we will look um, back um, and hopefully later, yeah, um, we can have a Mexican um, a specialist come to the center, yeah, um, for this chair. Now, when I talk about future directions, I think um, the important aspect for, for us to understand now is internationalization. I think we could bring this up for a matter of discussion again. Uh, and um, uh, it's also very important for us to look at where we are vis-a-vis -vis the outside world. Um, we've been so uh, into who we are and what we are within our own local situations. But uh, again, even with the communications with each other, we have not been very successful. So I think we need to take yeah, um, a reality check every five years um, and meet up regularly for all these um, local uh, uh, centers that we have so that we can um, discuss the programs, what needs to be streamlined, what not to, and so forth. Yeah? Um, internationalization is also important for ranking purposes. Malaysia is becoming um, like businesses um, already. Um, so how are we ranked in the world as far as our gender studies or women's studies? This is something um, which is uh, for the future to remember. Um, I would like to close um, um, here with um, hopes yeah, um, that there will be more um, links um, with PM um, and um, also with our French counterparts here. Uh, and there have been a lot that I've learned yeah, in these three days here. I think um, there's a wealth of information uh, that uh, we could share. Um, and again, I can learn or we can learn from all you know, parties. I thank you for your attention, and if there's any questions, I would like to um, address them. Thank you. Bueno, pues, muchísimas gracias, Baya. Por, eh, por ofrecernos un panorama del que personalmente yo conocía poco y creo que algunos pueden compartir <ríe> quizás eh, esta impresión y del que siento que he tenido un panorama bastante amplio desde saber que la independencia del país eh, se obtuvo en el 57, o sea, eso lo desconocía personalmente, y de ver y de poder apreciar también mmm, como una historia acelerada, ¿no? En, en estos 56 años, eh, donde eh, al parecer, o sea, no es al parecer, creyendo en todo lo que nos ha, has dicho, que, que hubo muchos, muchos esfuerzos para eh, sacar, sacar adelante un país, ¿no? Eh, gracias de verdad por, por esta conferencia muy completa. Eh, me llamaron la atención varias cosas. Eh, hay comentarios, tengo un, unas preguntas. Uno, que hayan obtenido que las maestras eh, tengan la misma paga, el mismo sueldo que los maestros en 1972. Eh, esto me llamó mucho la atención eh, y que esto eh, de, de esto se derivó como uh, acciones para la igualdad de salarios. Eh, si nos puedes decir un poquito más sobre esto, cómo se, se dio y, y, y por qué las profesoras <risa> o yo, y no otra categoría socioprofesional empezando por, por esto, ¿no? 
Luego me asombraron, eh, me asombró el hecho de que hubo toda una serie de leyes, de leyes que en muchos países todavía no hay, ¿no? O sea, fue como algo eficaz, ¿no? O sea, da esta impresión, a mí me dio esta impresión de que se aprobaron muchas leyes de manera bastante eficaz en un tiempo muy breve, si nos damos cuenta, y eh, me gustaría saber un poquito más sobre estas leyes. Es decir, eh, en general, para que se apruebe una ley, esto no se hace sin algún movimiento o alguna, algún bullicio que sea en la calle o en otras partes. Y entonces me quedé con la, con la duda o con la, con la curiosidad más bien de que nos platiques un poquito si eh, para que se aprobaran todas estas leyes hubo manifestaciones en la calle, hubo protestaciones, qué tipo de bullicio ha podido preceder estas, esta adopción de leyes. ¿no? Otra cosa, eh, estas leyes sí se aplican, sí funcionan, sí han obtenido resultados, ¿no? o sea, también. Luego me llamó la atención el hecho de que eh, a lo largo de, de tu presentación nos hablas mucho de las mujeres, las mujeres, las mujeres, las mujeres. Y eh, pues en otros contextos, en otros países, sabes bien que pues hablamos de las mujeres porque es un gran tema y mucha, mucha preocupación, pero también eh, vamos a hablar eh, pues del matrimonio eh, homosexual, eh, como nos pudo hablar eh, Eric ayer, y quisiera saber si me imagino que por razones culturales y religiosas, entre otras, no están forzosamente a la orden del día. Pero si nos pudieras dar más contextualización cultural para que entendamos eh, que el enfoque ha sido sobre todo hacia las mujeres. ¿No? También, ¿qué pasó con el aborto? Eh, según lo, 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 que, lo que yo he entendido, el aborto eh, no ha sido entre las leyes, ¿no? Entonces, eh, cuando es un tema eh, que es bastante importante en muchas sociedades actualmente, ¿no? Eh, bueno, en México lo podremos hablar, pero es algo que durante 20 años se está discutiendo, y etcétera, ¿no? Entonces, bueno, son muchas preguntas, tú respondes a lo que tú quieras, ¿no? Eh, eh, eso, eh, sino eh, de 20 universidades públicas nos mencionas que hay cuatro centros de estudios de género. No está mal, o sea, es bastante bien, porque eh, pues en México esto ha sido, o sea, hay muchas más universidades, tenemos una población que representa más del triple de la población de Malasia, o sea, no está nada mal, ¿no? Entonces, eh, y además, según lo que estoy entendiendo, es que estos centros de estudio de, de género se han fundado desde hace muy poco tiempo, o sea, son muy recientes. Es, entonces, llama mucho la, la atención eh, de, eh, de esto y, y creo que hay que valorar y, y pues sí, este, eh, este fenómeno. Eh, luego quisiera esto, pero esto no es para contestar ahorita, quizás a lo después, pero me llamó la atención también eh, de que sus estudiantes trabajan temas que no son forzosamente eh, diferentes de los temas que pueden trabajar nuestros estudiantes en México. Y entonces, retomando un poco la inquietud de Ana ayer sobre la bibliografía, a mí me interesaría mucho saber qué tipo de bibliografía eh, tienen o están en este diálogo con Estados Unidos. Con, bueno, me imagino que sí, porque eh, tú nos mencionaste ya que muchos de los eh, profesores, investigadores, se han formado, han hecho su PhD en Estados Unidos, o 
lo que sea, ¿no? Pero bueno, eso me quedó eh, la duda. Y también eh, dices, y esto me llama mucho la atención, muchas mujeres van a la universidad y eh, pocas eh, pues se quedan laborando eh, después en lo que sea, de hecho no forzosamente en la universidad, pero eh, en otras profesiones. Y entonces me hace pensar un poco en, eh, en lo que pasaba o, o en lo que se dijo, ¿no? en, para, tanto para Francia como para México, de hecho, de que las mujeres iban a la universidad a encontrar un marido, ¿no? a, en los años 60 o 70, ¿no? o, o algo así, que había un poco esta, esta idea. Y... Eh, y que luego, una vez que encontraban un marido, pues se salían, ¿no? Estaban bien educadas y ya. ¿Qué pasa? O sea, me imagino que hay razones culturales que hacen que a la mujer todavía es la esfera privada, es la esfera, sí, de la casa, las tareas domésticas, o, o, o no, o me equivoco, me, me faltan elementos culturales para entender... ¿Qué es lo que pasa con esto? Y ya me paro porque... <risa> Pero muchas gracias. Um, before the laws are passed, um, it goes into parliament. Before parliament, uh, it goes to be debated um, at the grassroots levels. Um, and definitely, um, one of the important uh, aspects of work um, with policies and so forth have been with the civil society. Um, mainly, um, like I said, NCWO, which is an umbrella yeah, organization with 145 um, um, smaller you know, organizations of women uh, have been very, very instrumental in um, uh, uh, kick, um, you know, kicking um, the um, uh, policies and the laws. Now, there have also been um, very important uh, aspect of uh, work in here, which is the legal aspect and the NGOs. Um, We've got a very good and very strong NGOs who are um, uh, uh, lawyers and uh, w those who are working in the legal. Uh, but they are not just women. Yeah, um, I must make sure that men have also been helpful in this. And um, as far as the violence and so forth, we also have a, a male, yeah, males, uh, Malaysian, Malaysian males against violence group. They have been very instrumental. Yeah, in uh, um, uh, 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 discussing and debating, and then passing and getting um, the the legislation for violence against women. Now, as far as um, uh, trafficking and so forth, we uh, Malaysia has always worked, yeah, very closely with um, the UN, uh, UNESCO, and so forth. Um, and therefore, this has become um, part and parcel of the global uh, um, uh, challenges that, that we are hoping yeah, uh, help. Because um, if we look at it from a very um, uh, a close, um, it does not help because uh, where we are, we are a confluence of so many different uh, um, uh, 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 paths. Yeah? Um, and therefore, things like um, uh, women's uh, the trafficking um, of not just women but also now men uh, um, and violence against not just women but also of men have become um, very very uh, uh, part and parcel of our life already. Um, as far as whether there have been uh, um, what do I say? Mm, um, as far as how we go about this, um, yes, we have had um, men and women picketing and you know um, showing demonstrations and things like that. But I think um, we have done this in a non-violent way. Um, many times we go through, yeah, um, the NCWO who will take it up um, to the government sectors, and therefore, yes, um, even though they have been displaced. 
yeah, banners and um, things that it has not been uh, a violent, uh, it has been quite peaceful. And um, with the Ministry of Women's Development um, and Family and Development, the grassroots, the people who are stakeholders have been invited um, just um, like this, yeah, um, to discuss uh, very important issues even before yeah, planning the budget. So um, it has been yeah, a fact that um, we listen to the grassroots levels uh, to be able to do uh, this. How is this implemented? Um, there have been research yeah, being done. Uh, in fact, uh, they have been very nice, um, very good uh, um, uh, legislations and, and, and bills like this, but it's anywhere in the country the implementation yeah, needs to be looked into. And therefore, um, from time to time, the government have uh, made us look and do research on this. Now, one of the important um, uh, uh, endeavor, research endeavor that we want to look into now is um, to look into the mainstreaming again. Yeah, um, because while we are saying that there, mean, there are mainstreaming and things like that that happens, uh, how much or how uh, is it done, um, and in which and, and which level is it um, effective? Yeah. Um, so that are uh, the questions. Um, what else? Okay. Uh, as far as um, okay, as far as the bibliography is concerned. Um, many of us have been very blessed yeah, um, to be studying um, overseas. Government scholars have come back to um, work in the academia, uh, even in the government um, sectors as well as the private sectors. Now, um, as I said earlier on, uh, on, on the first day, that in the 1980s, um, 1970s, a whole lot of scholars, government scholars have gone overseas. Um, people have gotten aware and heightened awareness of uh, women's issues, um, not just women themselves, but also men who have gone. Uh, many of us come back um, and, you know, uh, are trained. Now, where do we go? We are not just government scholars who have gone to the U.S. Um, a, a big part and chunk have gone to the U.K., and then very recently, another big chunk have gone to Australia and New Zealand. So you will find a world, worldwide yeah, uh, thing. Uh, but also uh, now we are beginning to look at um, not just yeah, those countries where bibliography is concerned. We now want to look at where we are regionally. So we uh, now have, um, when we read up, yeah, and do research, we need to look at the ASEAN countries uh, as well as the countries that are in the Pacific, um, very close to us, um, that, you know, um, has uh, had yeah, progress uh, or no progress in, you know, um, this um, development of equality for women. Um, so when we talk about places like Japan, um, we've students have come up to do literature review on this, yeah, um, and Korea. Um, and so there's a huge, sometimes um, it is worth looking at because now we have got to sit down and, and, and have a look at how wide, yeah, um, the bibliography is and how much of it has been dilate, di diluted or not, yeah, um, from, you know, where uh, um, theories and so forth have come from. Uh, and how much interpretation, how much local yeah, um, things have gone through this and, and have there been changes and similarities. That's, I hope that's okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. A ver. Bueno, pues, ahora eh, quisiéramos abrir uh, a las posibles preguntas que pueden uh, <laughs> tener. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bahia, for this very informative presentation. Um, I have two questions. The, the first one is, um, is about the, 
since I know you're trained in linguistics too, but it is about the use of the word gender. Yesterday you were telling us that this is a word, you know, you, you, you want you, which is to say not necessarily you personally, but uh, you, you, the body that you represent, uh, that you want to avoid because you think it has connotations that don't sit well with um, the kind of uh, um, governmental uh, national feminism you, you're, you, you, you're representing here. Um, and so, um, and, and, but I noticed that in your presentation to us today, of course the word gender was everywhere, you know, and you described the centers, the free Malaysian centers that deal with these issues as gender studies center. So, so I, I'm very curious to know what, you know, in Malaysian, in Bahasa, Malay, uh, what, what words you use then? Uh, I mean, I suppose it's not gender um, as such. I mean, I, I'm saying that because, for instance, you were just talking about Japan. I, I know that in, Jap in Japanese, they use, the, they have just imported the Anglo-French word gender. They say generous with a mm -hmm. Japanese accent, so to speak. Yeah. Uh, so what, what are the words that you use? What is the word you use in, uh, in Malaysian uh, instead of gender, for instance? And what are its uh, connotations and what is its semantic feel? So that's my first question. Mm -hmm. Shall I? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or do I want to? Okay. Antoine? Eh, también eh, muchas gracias por esta conferencia muy interesante yo no sabía nada o casi nada de eh, Malasia y me quedan <coughs> ya me queda más claro cuáles son las líneas de investigación en cuanto a eh, los estudios sobre eh, la mujer y también me queda un poco más claro cuáles son las políticas públicas ¿no? puesta en marcha para eh, favorecer los derechos de las mujeres y la inserción incluso social de las mujeres eh, claro, eh, comparto unas ideas que se están uh, diciendo en que parece que género y uh, estudios de las mujeres hay como una especie de equivalencia que se está uh, o que parece establecerse entre género y estudios de las mujeres pero en México Francia etcétera los estudios de género incluyen claro uh, estudios sobre lo que podemos llamar minorías uh, sexuales hombres que tienen sexo con hombres que lo asumen como tal, mujeres que tienen sexo con mujeres que lo asumen como tal. Entonces, lo que no me queda claro es si hay una línea de investigación que trata estos temas, eso sería una primera pregunta. Y una segunda pregunta, eh, en este proyecto de desarrollo eh, cuya meta es el 2020, no sé si se discute, se debate una agenda que podríamos llamar LGBT. Mm. Eh, muchas gracias por esta entrevista, por esta conferencia tan interesante. Eh, ha sido muy enriquecedor el punto de vista y abrirse a, a nuevos contextos. Eh, tengo dos cuestionamientos. Si fuera posible eh, que nos diera una idea de qué percepción hay en las mujeres dentro de, del grupo hacia estas carreras que tradicionalmente han sido masculinizadas, es decir, si la mujer ahora tiene más eh, interés de incursionar en carreras que anteriormente no formaban parte de la, de la expectativa de las mujeres. Y en segundo lugar, eh, desde su perspectiva, si todos estos eh, avances que se han dado con respecto al desarrollo de las mujeres, cómo han permeado hacia la percepción de la mujer misma en su sociedad y en cómo se desenvuelve. Gracias. Gracias. Pues quizás eh, si, si puede contestar ahora. Okay, thank you very much. Y, y retomamos otras preguntas. Thank you. I uh, um, will first get into ends a question about gender. Um, in Malay, gender is jantina, uh, which is not actually gender as we think of it. Um, that's why there's always been um, a big problem with it because we don't have a specific word yeah, uh, that will encapture what actually um, gender is all about. People will think that it's sex. 
Yeah, um, and when it is, it's always biological, and therefore that has become um, something that we've always had to explain. Uh, on the, a negative side, um, gender sounds like gender. Um, if uh, Professor Ramirez knows what gender is, I don't know, in Bahasa Indonesia, um, gender means a widow, and a lot of people will start to you know, um, make very bad you know, connotations with that. Um, we've had all yeah, kinds of um, uh, digressions with this term, and we've decided that we would still go on uh, with gender. Uh, because uh, we have borrowed, in fact, a lot of Malay, yeah, in Bahasa Melayu, we have um, borrowed a lot, yeah, from the English um, vocabulary, uh, but not just English, but many other uh, vocabularies in the world. Uh, Spanish, for instance, um, uh, sapato or zapato, we, we know, shoes, um, it's come from uh, our colonial past, um, we were, um, uh, colonized by first the um, Portuguese and then the Dutch and then the English. Now, as far as what the connotations are with gender, I have um, stated yesterday um, about uh, how it is that we um, don't want to use gender um, uh, very much now if we are thinking about bidding for research and so forth. Now, why is this so? Um, because a lot of uh, things with gender questions um, norms, yeah, um, and we've had experience, in fact, um, uh, experience where there have been loggerheads, yeah, um, with discussions uh, to do with uh, how um, norms are questions and so forth, um, and very much to do with. Um, if it's a way of life, yeah, that we think of it um, and, and how it is mainstream, we have to think of this is in, implemented in many ways of our life, then it has got to do a lot with um, religion as well as culture and the cultural values and so forth. So a lot of this um, have had implications yeah, to the use of um, gender yeah, in the country. But again, also I am thinking about it um, in uh, the aspect of getting funds yeah, um, from outside or uh, um, uh, grant, grant um, organizations where now, yeah, um, if you think about gender, um, people are saying that's the past, it's already gone. There are more niche areas or areas to um, look into. Um, climate change context yeah, um, have been um, the ones now that we have got to you know, uh, contend with. Um, and they say, well, um, gender, well, that was 1980s, 1990s. Um, now we've got to contend with, you know, in Malaysia, with things like um, climate change, poverty eradication and rural transformation, human security, border security, uh, not just that, um, how is it that we can innovate um, and um, gender has always been, you know, um, uh, uh, in, in this sense, how about biotech, nanotechnology, medical technology, science and technology. So in, in the sense, it as an area yeah, uh, where we want to do research, um, uh, people are thinking it's surpassed, it's time. Now let's look at the urgency. So that's why, you know, we we get into yeah these discourses about this. However, um, when we talk about gender, going back to, to your, your place, and if we want to make uh, a cause for it, we will have to have a very uh, uh, strategized way of discussing. Yeah, um, so that there will not be loggerheads. And uh, after how many years of uh, going through this, we now uh, pretty much know yeah, um, how it is that a certain group can tackle yeah, the government or tackle you know, people by using yeah, um, uh, other means except gender. And one of it is women's empowerment or capacity building yeah, and so forth. So, so this is how it is that we get across yeah, 
uh, but not you know um, being volatile with it. Yeah, um, is to imagine yeah um, putting gender perhaps, but and, and, uh, couching it, you know, in, in in some ways. Yeah, I hope that's uh, okay with you. Um, as far as um, the the question of Antoine, uh, sexual. Uh, minorities, queer, and things like that. If you look um, and and see, yeah, uh, the kinds of work we do. While I um, was talking to Solidat, well, we have, you know, sometimes agendas already given to us by the government, but that is not just it, yeah. Um, within why gender is okay in education is because it's education, yeah. Um, uh, we. Uh, try to empower our students um, and people around us yeah, um, to use this to, to, to understand it, um, hoping that they will also help us yeah, in, in getting the word across. Yeah? And therefore, we open up uh, this because then with, under the banner of education and uh, knowledge production and understanding and doing research, yeah, this can come out if it's not yeah, going out in public. Um, like I've mentioned and talked to Eric about this with same-sex marriage, uh, homophobia and things like that. Um, we know it, it stands in, in society. However, a lot of these discourses have gone underground. Uh, many of these discourses can be looked um, uh, through uh, the social media. Yeah, uh, and alternate medias. Uh, it's not to say that it is um, uh, not there, yeah, but perhaps it's a different platform yeah, um, that we can manage yeah, this. Uh, it's not shaft yeah, um, there, but it is there, uh, perhaps cloaked yeah, in a different uh, uh, manner. Um, <clears throat> I was talking um, just now about um, uh, uh, perhaps same-sex marriage and so forth that uh, has got a lot to do with uh, religion uh, and Malaysia being um, um, you know uh, made of many cultures and many religions um, uh, discourse yeah, uh, uh, touches around these grounds as well so um, we, we manage somehow uh, uh, but Many people say that uh, you know uh, a lot of it may not be there because it's not talked about. Um, but if you um, look through, yeah, the research activities and the kinds of work we do, we do have um, uh, uh, work, yeah, on um, these areas. Um, just recently, I was um, uh, supervising a student um, uh, to do with you know a group. Um, of, of um, males, yeah, um, who uh, talk differently and, and differently, and so who are they, yeah? Um, so this kind of things, yeah, are coming out, uh, and students themselves want to know because um, they themselves, you know, are, are part of it or, uh, are, you know, want to know about this. So, so in the name of education, in the name of knowledge production, and um, so forth, we don't you know, um, say you can't do this. But perhaps do it in, um, in a manner that's delicate, yeah? um, and the robustity of research is not being impinged. In fact, it still goes on. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Oh, oh, okay. Sorry, 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 sorry. I think um, one of uh, your um, uh, talk about e women's experience, yeah. Um, actually, in Malaysia, um, we all know now, yeah, um, and uh, perhaps uh, a long time ago that women can do anything they want. Um, the government has actually been um, very generous in the sense that uh, with education, uh, this is the passage in which um, women can, can do what they want. Um, we have had um, you know, talks about uh, things like um, how it is that women have progressed in many areas that, are non, uh, that were masculine before and then not now. 
um, and um, you will find a very good change yeah, in Malaysia um, about this. Um, in fact, there have been also um, um, Malaysian yeah, uh, trailblazers um, who have delved into yeah, um, the non um, uh, uh, feminine or you know, very masculine. Uh, engineering um, is one aspect now that um, we've had uh, uh, many yeah, women engineers, um, petroleum engineers, um, and if you know who, what petroleum engineers do, uh, it's a very, very tough job um, where you will find yourself yeah, in the middle of the sea um, with a whole lot of guys. Yeah? Um, and that can be quite uh, yeah, uh, quite frightening for some women, but they are out there. Um, we've had doctors, we've had lawyers that were very a long time ago um, part and parcel of masculine. Um, nurses are now males, so you know. So there has been disparity, yeah. And this, um, uh, we've had recently um, a woman. Yeah, astronaut training. However, she did not go up to the moon, but we've had a few women who wanted to become astronauts. So um, it's 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 nothing to stop you. Yeah, um, and uh, it's permeating in the world because uh, even in the interiors where there have not been education. Yeah, um, but there have been media, um, um, internet, and things like that. That. Um, even in the interiors, um, women are doing, you know, more, yeah, uh, in the masculine areas, uh, and also if you think about culture, yeah, uh, a lot of this have been sharing the role sharing, yeah, um, where men and women work together. Um, so uh, it has been, you know, in certain places in the communities of the indigenous people, males. Uh, take care of the health, you know, uh, of females, and females take care of the health of males. Um, you talk about traditional healers, now who are, you know, um, that uh, calibre, who are leaders in, in themselves. Yeah. So um, I think uh, um, uh, I will leave it to to that. If that's okay, is that okay? Yeah. Bueno, pues muchas gracias. Eh, ¿Recuperamos una o dos preguntas más? <ríe> sí. Y cerramos después. Gracias. Bueno, primero agradecerte, María, creo que es una exposición, digo, que, que yo no esperaba. Eh, debo confesarme que conozco muy, muy poco de Malasia y nos abriste un panorama, bueno, al menos en lo personal, muy grande. Eh, y me gustaría como preguntarte un poco, como decía Karina hace rato, de, sobre esta curiosidad. ¿Cómo, no, ¿Cómo nos ven desde Malasia? No sé si existimos los mexicanos, las mexicanas, eh, para, para las mujeres de Malasia, sobre todo en este ámbito de estudios de la mujer, y específicamente de género, la, las masculinidades y demás. Este, ¿Cómo nos ven? No sé si ustedes estén informados de los feminicidios, las muertes de Juárez, la inequidad de las, de las mujeres indígenas todo este maltrato que se ha estado dando. Eh, no sé cómo nos vean, ojalá nos pudieras dar una perspectiva, si es posible, de, de, de quiénes somos. Eh, creo que era un poquito eh, las palabras, las preguntas que se planteaban como origen de este encuentro. Sí, Juan José. M más que una pregunta, o me gustaría hacer una, una proposición. En la medida en que tanto en Malasia como en México, en general para las ciencias sociales, nos nutrimos de las corrientes de los países desarrollados, pero creo que tanto en Malasia como en México realizamos un importante esfuerzo por desarrollar también eh, perspectivas analíticas propias para tratar de vernos nosotros con nuestros propios ojos. Y creo que en la medida en que Malasia y México siguen siendo todavía sociedades en proceso de desarrollo, sería importante, muy importante intercambiar experiencias. Y yo quisiera hacer una propuesta muy concreta, que no he cansado de hacer cuando tenemos visitantes que vienen de Asia o de África, 
y consistiría simplemente en un intercambio de publicaciones. Uh -huh. Estas pueden ser, ya sea en inglés, ya sea en Bajasa Malaysia, uh, porque serían útiles tanto al programa interdisciplinario de estudios de la mujer, como en nuestro programa de eh, estudios sobre el sudeste de Asia, donde la lengua que enseñamos es eh, el Bajasa Indonesia, muy cercana a la Bajasa Malaysia. Y también creo que esto sería una oportunidad importante para los estudiantes del PIEM que, que, que estuviesen interesados en temas de, de Asia o, o de África, po, poder acercarse al Centro de Estudios de Asia y África para tener informaciones adicionales sobre temáticas, no solamente de la mujer, sino mucho más amplias, e inclusive adquirir una, una formación en lenguas de estas áreas. Hay que tener en cuenta que en nuestro centro enseñamos las lenguas principales de las áreas donde tenemos programas de estudios. Muchas gracias. Gracias. Pues... Thank you very much. Um, I will go with the first question just now about um, how um, uh, our uh, Mexicans, yeah, um, looked upon. Um, the reason I am here uh, is because we look upon Mexico. Um, we had, had not much yeah, um, opportunities, but when opportunities come, we seize it. We see a lot of similarities um, in the culture, in um, the way of life, um, and um, we do respect that. Um, as we have um, respect um, in Malaysia so for all different um, groups of people. Now, to tell you the truth, uh, anything outside of US, being north of US, uh, is very, very um, important to us. Um, I think uh, we have had in University Kabangsa in Malaysia a very good effort yeah, um, to have um, uh, pro uh, programs and uh, projects yeah, um, that um, include Latin America. Um, we have now, um, under the aegis of the Institute of Malaysia and um, International Studies, um, Memorandum of Understanding, yeah, um, work yeah, in Latin America. Um, we've had seminars, um, in fact, the ambassadors yeah, of Mexico and um, other Latin Americas are always yeah, coming to University Kebangsaan uh, to give us information about not just the political but economical but also the cultural yeah, aspect. Um, many things in the cultural aspect also um, you know, um, fascinates us. Um, the Mayan culture, um, the indigenous cultures that we have um, are things not just that we read, yeah? um, we want to actually feel and, uh, about this. And we've had um, students yeah, doing mobility studies that have come and forth going. So I hope this will be uh, a, you know, a good exchange yeah, program in the sense that uh, we learn from each other. Um, um, my own yeah, aspect of um, my own studies and intellectual cap uh, capabilities and things like that will take into consideration uh, some things in Maya and things like that when I teach my students. So this is something um, that um, we now uh, have because we now not just have the you know, Anglo yeah, aspect, but we have the Latin American aspect, and we hope that this will be one that will be forged yeah, um, uh, for a long period of time. Um, in the media, uh, things that happen in Mexico is always, you know, part and parcel of the news. Um, not just, you know, anything, not just the political aspect, but things like cultural aspect. Um, I've read uh, in the newspaper about... Um, a Mayan, uh, uh, a statue, yeah, um, that is a woman, yeah, statue, a goddess, uh, that have been unearthed, and I hope to see that soon, yeah, uh, with my own eyes, yeah. So this is something um, that that we have. So it's it's wonderful. Um, your foods, 
yeah, come to us and we learn uh, about you through foods. So um, not only do we know tacos, but you know enchiladas and so forth. Um, but your salsas are lovely. So I feel very much at home. Uh, in early in the morning, I eat salsa and ask you know the person at the restaurant, and he gladly gives me salsa. So so thank you very much, Mexico. Uh, I feel at home, very much at home. Yeah. Um, so. So it's not just this, it's the foods, the culture that, you know, uh, we learn from each other. And um, uh, may maybe we've had a very Anglo, you know, uh, look at it. But, you know, for us to be able to, to, to learn and to see this, you know, as, our, as it is here with our own, uh, 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 you know, uh, uh, capacity is something um, that uh, I, I must you know, um, really appreciate and I must thank you uh, very much for um, uh, inviting me here. As far as uh, Professor Ramirez's um, uh, um, uh, uh, proposal, yes, definitely this will be um, one very important um, aspect. Uh, definitely we will get in, in links, yeah, um, and anything to do with um, publications um, can be, you know, um, gotten through our website as well. Yeah, so I think the important links, this can be done virtually um, and also, you know, through personal contact. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. Bueno, pues vamos a cerrar esta primera parte de la mañana. Eh, tendremos un receso de cinco minutos y regresamos con la mesa redonda feminismos y feministas de hoy y, y de mañana, de hecho. <ríe> eh, una, un solo anuncio para los estudiantes que han pedido una constancia de asistencia.